Good evening, everybody. I am your host, Gushan, and uh, welcome to tonight's stream. Um, tonight, I'm going to be playing the brand new Command Live scenario, Black Gold Blitz. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as you guys can already tell, I am dealing with the plague right now, so I don't know how long this stream is going to go. Um, but I am joined by the uh, scenario's uh, creator, Coiler. Hello, Coiler. Hi. Hi, Kushan. It's me. I can understand and forgive you for being for being sick. So just um, yeah, I'll be happy to stay as long as you need. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Um, um, it's probably because I'm not talking really loud. Is that any better, Dandon? The usual uh, voice issue strikes again. One of these days, I'm going to actually have to go out and get a new mic. Is that uh, any better? Yeah, it feels better. It seems louder to me, at least. Okay. So, uh, Black Gold Blitz is a uh, basically a conflict between uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran. Um, yes. Very eerie timing for this release. You know, that seems to be kind of a thing with uh, Command Live scenarios. You know, every time one releases, you know, tensions seem to be high wherever uh, wherever uh, it seems to be taking place. It's it's a little eerie. So, uh, Clover, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about it? Okay, so Black Gold Blitz is a Command Live scenario. It's... Scenario type, that of a big Saudi Arabia versus Iran clash, is one that I've wanted to do for quite a while. So when Dee asked me if I could do the next live scenario and I accepted, I said, I basically got approved of, can we, I basically said, can we do a Saudi Arabia versus Iran one? And then that was accepted, and then I made it, and it's there. That's the very basic part of it. All right, so uh, go ahead and start this up. I'm going to be playing as the Saudis tonight, just because uh, I think their doctrine and hardware is uh, more familiar to me. And yes, I think that, have, and I think, and based off of what I know of the Iranian capabilities, we actually stand a chance at not having our entire air force decimated in the first five minutes. <laughs> okay. So, um, the recent naval incident, so, uh, the... Backstory is there was a naval incident that kind of led to this happening. So, the recent naval incident has given us a go-ahead to launch the attack and cripple Iran's oil industry for years. Um, if Iran does not beat us to the punch with air and missile strikes on their own, we expect that they will do so in retaliation the moment we begin the attack and that their own intelligence will detect us doing so very quickly. Even our normal allies have warned in favor of caution, but the time has passed. We shall do what must be done. The weather is clear. I expect it to remain so for the rest of the day. So... Iran's Air Force is old and familiar. Basically, uh, old F-14s, um, backed up by uh, F-4s and F-5s. Uh, question, history of the Great War. How do I handle information that isn't widely available? Guesstimate. Basically, that's the best I can do. Guesstimate it and see how it goes because there, that sort of thing is a problem. So it's just take a guess and see how it goes. Um, with, based, with, sorry, go ahead, Goyler. With research, of course. It's not like a I can make up, oh, every last one will be functional, but it's just basically see how it goes. You have to make an informed guess and then See how what's and, and if that happens to fit the scenario, all the better for it. Um, so going back to the briefing here, sorry, what's uh, um, so we've got F-15s and Eurofighters. Um, 
Ground-based air defenses consist of the recently delivered S-300 batteries and old familiar Cold War surplus weapons. The S-300s have been spotted defending Tehran, which makes sense, and are likely to have been moved much farther south. Um, their missile force is their biggest threat, and one least able to be countered. Uh, our operations staff has determined that it would not be cost-effective to play whack a tell with the enemy missile force. Um, we're getting something coming through on the background there, Coiler. Well, my dryer stopped, so it might be my computer's fan. Um, our operations staff have determined that it will be not be cost-effective to play whack a tell with the enemy missile force during these operations, as the size of Iran means that most will be able to launch in time. Our only chance is to trust in the Patriot batteries, which I don't know if that's really a great I think to be trusting in. Um, ir irregular and special operations will definitely be attempted, but those are out of our hands. Sounds like a vacuum. Hmm. Um, Maybe. So we've got E3s. And Saab AEWs and tankers at Al Karj. Al Abdul Aziz Air Base has F 15Cs and F 15Ss and tornado ground attack aircraft. More F 15Ss and the new F 15Sas at King Khalid Air Base. That's Fod, the farthest from my RAN. Um, King Fod Air Base has Eurofighters and F 15Cs. King. They've got a lot of F-15Cs. I didn't realize this. Um, in addition, the nation's arsenal of DF-21 missiles has been readied, and leadership is considered deploying our outdated DF-3s as well. Does Does Saudi Arabia actually have DF-21 missiles? Apparently. Wow. Um, I uh, I didn't know that actually. China um, imports oil too, and they've had DF-3s for quite a while too. So. Yeah. Well, we'll learn something new every day. Um, the principal targets are the Karj Island Export Terminal and as many of Iran's domestic oil refineries as possible. Beyond that, oil rigs, pipeline segments, power plants are valid as well. Absent the north northern base S-300, the defenses cannot be cannot completely stop a strike package, but can maul it. Uh, POWs would be an important bargaining ship, therefore losses of aircraft must be kept as low as possible. The Kingdom's defenses, even if severely weakened state, are more than capable of stopping any conventional air offensive by the Iranians. The wild card is their ballistic missile complex. Alright, so I think uh, Kuwait, the UAE, Qatar, and Oman have forbidden us from using their airspace. Our other neighbors have either allowed us to pass through or are in no shape to con contest an intervention. So, I kind of find that, that interesting, Claylor, of uh, given, like, kind of the Gulf State Coalition of uh, that Kuwait U8, was that just kind of a gameplay? Uh, Basically, yeah, I have to admit this. I guess I might be a little forthright in admitting this. Yeah, it's mostly for gameplay. Um, gameplay balance. And of course, the other even bigger wild card, and one that makes this scenario, is of course that the U.S. isn't doing anything itself. And so yeah, that's basically, it is for gameplay reasons, just not having an extra couple dozen high-end F-16s and Mirages for the UAE at least, and making the battle space a little more cramped. So that's how it's, that's how it's. Nope, that, that, that makes uh, sense. So uh, where did you, uh, why, uh, why Saudi versus Iran? Um, because it's a way for me to use Iran and Iran in a full blown big, no holds barred scenario in a way that isn't the and Saudi Arabia is basically by almost by process of elimination um 
One of the ways where I could have a, for lack of a better word, balanced, and even that's a little iffy, opponent for Iran, like if I was to use the U.S., um, then I would probably have to have a min-max, the U.S. must destroy absolutely every last counter and pipeline segment on the map. If they lose one, if they lose one aircraft in the process, they'll have to be content with a minor defeat. If they lose two aircraft, they lose the whole scenario. Obviously, I'm exaggerating a bit, but you you made that Iran strike stream yourself, so you can see how um, big that would be to balance. How balancing something like that tends to have to go to these extremes. Um, that's the U.S. The second is Israel, but that has the thing of um, Iran can't really fight back in that case except with missiles. So that would be Israel does a conventional push. Iran has to fire back, dice rolls as they encounter the ABM systems. That's another thing. Saudi Arabia gives a sort of balance and that's one thing. And then for the oil part, you can hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay. Okay, so for the oil part, that was because I wanted a target for Iran and a scenario featuring them that isn't either the nuclear facilities, which are centered around big deal for obvious reasons, or the U.S. trying to force the Strait of Hormuz, because those have been done, but the oil itself hasn't as much. So I figured I'd try something novel there. No, the, that that sounds uh, that makes sense. Um, so why uh, this and not another uh, Russia versus NATO? Because I wanted um, not just something novel. It's because I've because I wanted something novel and both sides have pretty novel equipment. And they're actually, both sides are also limited in its equipment, but Saudi Arabia in many ways is too. Like they have single digit numbers of tankers instead of double digit ones, that sort of thing. And as you saw, a lot of stuff is in the west coast of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I uh, saw that. I'm actually setting up a couple of, uh support missions real quick to uh, support our forces and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh... okay you can do that I'll be right back so we're gonna go ahead we've already got a uh, Saab uh, 2000 AEW Erie already airborne so we're gonna go ahead and assign this guy to the uh, our, my just created northern uh, AEW uh, mission. Assigned to mission, AEW North. So he'll uh, begin move, maneuvering up there. Um, and I should probably, so, so this is our primary target, the, or not that, the Karg Island oil infrastructure is our primary so plenty of targets there for us to attack oil tanks jetties uh, that's the airport not too worried about that um, we do not have any uh, predetermined information on uh, their SAMs so the thermal power plant All right, so make sure this guy's already got his radar up. In fact, I'm actually going to push him a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm right back now. Welcome back, Oiler. Okay. All right, so well, we've already getting, uh, we've already got vampires inbound. Yep, these are the missile strikes. They're... So, 
they're the most luck-based part of the scenario. Generally, I don't face things because, and ballistic missiles are nothing if not deterministic and or luck-based, but these are more or less, even if they do their worst case, either side can overcome them. That's what I've found. All right, so they're at uh, 112,000 feet when we uh, got the initial order. So they're actually probably up above our uh, our radar coverage right now. So we won't get information on them until they actually uh, hit. And so what I am going to do is I do have one battalion of... DF-21s, is that correct? Is there another one that I'm missing? No, that's just the that's the one you have right there. Alright, so that's the only one I have right now? Yeah. All you right. can... After you fire them, you can go to special actions and try to get a bunch of DF-3s, but there are no... But they pale in comparison, the DF-3s. Oh, so there, so, are, so there is... Uh, there is special, special. actions. Oh, yeah, for request additional ballistic missiles. Nice. Um, I don't think we're going to do that. Um... All right, so we got some. It's very interesting that uh, that the Saudis are using um, sparrow, still using sparrows on their F-15Cs. I think that might be a database limitation now. Um... That might be a database limitation. It's the hopefully there could be some database. Yeah, there. That might be a database limitation, but it might not. I'll have to do some more research myself. But that's how it's. The oh, Iranians. Oh, I, oh, I don't know. I know. I know that they have Eurofighters, so I would. I would yeah. kind of assume that they that they had actually purchased, you know, Amrams. Given the way. Oh, the F-15Ss have Amrams. Lots of them. The F-15Cs, and at least in game, are. Oops, there goes the Patriots. Too late. Yep. So. uh... We did get some damage, and looks like they did take out some of our uh, some of our oil tanks. Yeah. So, is that are those chem or that's just that's just the explosion? That's just right? the that's just the explosion. It's not a chemical. I'm gonna say, what the heck is? The, I I don't think I've ever seen the orange before. Yeah, everything explosion that has a something that fans out. So, that's how the orange goes. And there goes the poor Patriot. So... If I go uh, silent, it's uh, probably because I'm trying to clear my nose, so... I, I'm not mm. ignoring or, or turning off of the course. mic or anything, I'm just uh, trying to... save you guys. Of course. From... Alright, so... At least it went after our oil infrastructure. I was afraid that Southern kind of group was going to come after our uh, our air base. All right, so we've got tor <clears throat> so we've got thirty tornadoes. Not all of them active, obviously. Um, four with storm shadows, Faveways, and Damocles, LDP pods. Um, We've got some alarm missiles, which I th think are anti-radiation missiles. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So we've got, I think the, uh, these are UK, and I think the UK actually retired these ones. Yeah. Um, so we've got some there. So given that this scenario is a full 24-hour scenario, um, it's also interesting that we've got some air bases that don't have any aircraft based at them. Yeah, I checked scramble dot on NL and that came up a little um, I guess they're there as emergency landing spots in case they run out of fuel. Well I think like um oh never mind. 
Because I think like King Khalid Military City, I think is um, it's not a CENTCOM base, but it's like a deact, not really a deactivated. It's not really. It's an inactive CENTCOM base too. Yeah, I'm. All right. There's... So, so over here. All right. So some. Did sparrow... you get your tankers set up? Um, I have not. These guys have to fly an awfully long way to get into strike range. Um, yeah, this was a very um. Yeah, this was a very difficult scenario to. Oh, I did miss a second missile strike. Oh crap. This was a pretty difficult scenario to make because something asymmetric like this. You can't just throw F-15s and SU-27 other, and then just add a little more of one or the other. Um, something asymmetric like this kind of needs a sort of soft factor, so that's why I kept a lot of the Saudi stuff to the left, to the west, in the far edge of the country. And if and if I and I think the insetting reason for this is. Well, you can see so that they're out of the range of most of Iran's ballistic missiles that far west. Yeah, it seems so, like, we're, I'm, like I'm actually just going to have to use my tankers basically just over my the central portion of the country just to get my aircraft in the west just to uh, yeah, basically that's, be able to strike. That's how it was designed. All right, so I'm just going to set up a tanker pattern here in the middle. Um, I actually kind of want a longer line so they actually have room to tank. So, uh, what, what, uh, how difficult was this uh, scenario to come up to uh, to actually make? You know, what's the what's the research like? And um, well, for Saudi Arabia, it was fairly easy. Um, Scramble.nl, you use that a lot. Um, a lot of other public stuff. For Iran, it was considerably harder because of how secretive they are. Um, and Scramble.nl helped. Too, but the um, it was harder, so I had to use more guesstimation. But it was the research wasn't that hard, especially since I have some books already on like Saudi Arabia, Iran, their military forces in the Middle East. That's um, so that helped a lot. Those having that st kind of stuff there already. All right, so let's go ahead and get. I'm gonna go ahead and sign my Air Airbus A330s to my air to air mission refueling mission. If Kushan was playing Iran, what do you think the ideal opening? Move is? I'm not gonna spoil that. Try that out uh, for yourself. Raise the uh, white flag right at the start. Hmm. Or just charge all your F5, you know, basically just charge everything, you know, your F5s in first, run the Saudis out of missiles, and then bring in your F14s. Well, so the all right. Oh, I'm like completely losing. I'm not even sure like where I'm gonna start right now, to be honest. Um, Let I'm... the scenario run for a bit. That should give you a bit of motivation yeah. for something to. Oh, I'm be... just, I'm just not even thinking right, thinking straight. That's all. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm going to wait for tankers to get up in the central. 
Um, let's see, do we have anything already? All right, so we got an Elint aircraft, so we've, let's go ahead and launch him. Sentries are currently bugged. Um, launch just the, no, the RE3s are bugged, just launch the regular RE3s too. Well, the, um, I thought the RE3A was, was an Elint aircraft. I didn't think it was a E3. I think the regular one has an Elint of some kind in too. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's a known database bug. Um, so the regular one has some kind of Elint in too. So All right, well that's... then I'll go ahead and just cancel that then. Is that just a, is that a bug that's being worked on? Yes, the, the matrix thread that I've said they're working on it. So try a... Go try a, there's your other tankers. You know, Dan, and I came really close to just not streaming tonight. Um, all right, so it looks like most of my strikers are in the west. Um, the tornadoes are all in the east, though. Yeah, we do have, oh. a, we do have a lot of tornadoes, so let's... Uh, Let's just go ahead and and we've got plenty of ammo, plenty of storm. We got sixteen more storm shadows, so we've got enough for a couple reloads. So I'm gonna launch these guys in groups of two. In fact, actually, I'm gonna I want to cancel that. I want to launch some more F-15Cs as Drake escort first. Launch them in flights of four. Once they take off, then I will send up. Say so use some of the F-15Ss, the ones with AMRAMs, too, as a, um, because that's what they're there for. So this scenario was pretty, was tricky to make because it's asymmetrical and it's one of the first scenarios I made where you have two large, um, two basically, two la large two-sided scenarios. So you have to two. So, but I'm, I'm happy how it turned out. I'm a very critical person, but I'm still ha very happy how this turned out. So it's, uh, I think, a good compromise between the necessary extravagance for a live scenario and my own stubborn scenario creep is not allowed to happen attitude, which I did have to hold back because this is a live scenario after all. Yeah, don't want any uh, scenario creep. Unlike um, some people who might be uh, oh, yeah. working so on just he... scenarios in general, whose uh, scenario creep just is a, uh, a fact of life. Ah, uh, see those bogeys over I see. Iran. I'm gonna let them come to me. I'm not gonna go rush out and meet them. Good. You're you've learned well. No, I just I figure I have uh, after uh, kind of getting uh, my butt handed to me in uh, I think it was downtown in Damascus a couple weeks ago on stream. Um, I'm just gonna let them kind of come to me and run into my Sams and then. Which is what I should have done in downtown in Damascus the other day. Ugh. All right. 
I really want to launch my my DF twenty ones, but it's like uh, I only have four of them, so just hit like four random of those structures, power plants, or the like in the middle of Iran. They're basically your free makeup for their ballistic missiles with your ballistic missiles. Nah, I see. All right, so uh, power plant. I'm assuming that they're all like they all they're basically all give the same uh yes yeah. there's uh yeah where, where is I their do. nuclear infrastructure here uh you know I don't see any like nuclear reactors or anything like that um that was a um your that was a that was part of my, I think the map was cluttered as is, so I've sort of kept the nuclear stuff because that's the focus of most of the community I ran scenarios. I kept that off the map, actually kept that off the map because it's cluttered as is. And so I'll admit that's mostly a gameplay. Um, yeah, those, yes, yeah, something like that. Um, all right, there they go. Missiles away. And I don't know if you're... So I'm pretty sure that this is a strike package coming in on on us now. Um, Clover, did you did you uh, do any sort of randomization in this scenario, or did you just do the uh, just the special action for the special actions? And I ran the randomization special actions. Um, that's I mean for normal for the rest of the scenario, it's mostly just what's in the engine already. Um, less is, that is, the missiles can miss, etc. Um, but the special actions I made random because I didn't want them, or at least didn't want them all to be freebies. I wanted to have a positive outcome, a neutral one in some cases, and a negative outcome as well. So if there's no risk to special actions, there's no point in not executing them. That was brought up. In, and so I figured that's what I would, so that's what I would do. Yeah, there's a surprising amount of randomness just from the basic gameplay I found. No, that makes sense. Um, so we're going to use my uh, sparrow armed... There goes our DF-21s. I'm going to use my Sparrow armed F-15Cs here to uh, as basically our gatekeeper. Does look like we do have a strike coming in. Um, doesn't look like we have any SAM batteries that's actually going to be effectively be able to engage them. So the only one that we have is the IHOC battery right there and it they may just skirt its range um tankers are airborne for both of our missions so let's go ahead what do we have over here in the east um meteor cap Amram cap, lots of sparrow armed F 15 Cs. I think everything over here is just uh, oh, nope, nope, we do have aircraft configured for the strike roll over here. SA, so is the is the SA just the F 15 E? 
Yeah, it's basically, it's the most advanced F15E um, version there is, or at least that's what they claim it is. It's certainly an advanced F15E version. So it has the, has a lot of range to it and a lot of, a lot of capability. Now, um, did you consider putting uh, like civil aviation in here just to uh, confuse things up, or was that just a, a little bit maybe too much creep? It was in the creep category. Um, I've. It was in the creep category. I have been pretty, <sighs> pretty Henry Fordish regarding creep sometimes, and that has its good qualities and it has its bad qualities at least that's the critical part of me speaking again did uh did you consider it very heavily or was that just kind of one of those things of yeah i, I never really seriously considered civil aviation that much um that was not really something i considered too much i and then that was, yeah, not something I truly considered too much. Plus, I don't think it would have been that confusing in hindsight. In hindsight. Unless you had, of course, 15 business jets flying in close proximity to each other from Saudi Arabia. And they're all mysteriously innocent. That is not exactly realistic. Yeah, I mean it's 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 kind of nice seeing you know maybe flights around you know commercial airliners and such, but I think the amount you would have to add in to really confuse the picture would be just would be almost too much. Yeah, and, uh, we did. Uh, I actually did miss my my missile strikes. It looks like the target is still there, so we either missed them or we just didn't get an update. Oh, here you here are the kitties. Do you see the? You see the see the big radar warning. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you definitely can see the uh, the Tomcats. Uh, They're old, they, big they, 70s radars that are as they, powerful as they, they are. They, look, they light off that Ognite radar, and you know they can pretty much. Uh... So yep, we do know that there's some F-15s active, or F-14s. I'm sorry, we do know yeah. that they're they're out there. Um, so, um, you know, concerning things like, um, I mean, this may be giving a little bit too much away, but did you consider, or did you, in fact, you know, turn down the the competency rating of, or did you, of the Iranians to, you know? I actually turned up the competency ratings of the Iranians and oh. turned the Saudis down um, for balance reasons. Um, it would have been an interesting experience, I think, and probably the most realistic to have both of them fairly low. But competency is a pretty arbitrary and thorny subject. But for balance reasons, I figured since the Saudis are on the are on the since the Saudis have the technical advantage, I'd better give the Iranians as many soft advantages as I can. And my philosophy when I was making this was. When in doubt, if it makes the Iranians stronger, do that. Nope, it d definitely makes sense. So we are getting some uh, some sand radars lighting off now as well. And still don't know what those are. We're not getting any emissions. I would venture to guess those are probably F-5s. From what I remember, uh, from when I was making uh, my Iran strike scenario, um, they have a crap ton of F-5s. Like, a lot of F-5s. Well, I mean, not that the F-5 should be, like, considered, an, like, a threat. It's basically like the MiG-21, and they get slaughtered, you know. It's about the well, only situation where I could see, like, a B-1R actually being useful. It's if you had to fight off a million F5s. Or or just yeah. or just any, you know, 
you know, inferior yeah. Air Force that just maybe, you know, has more numbers. Although the B, although in that case, if the B-1 has it, it would just, um, if a B-1 was to encounter an inferior, just stay with standoff weapons and stay on the deck. But True. the B-1R is at least a fun concept to think about, even if it's not a, even if it's not too practical. Oh, definitely. All right, so I just gave our uh, our flight of uh, F-15Cs here their uh, marching orders as to who they're going to uh, attack from. Even the ones on the left, I think. Um, they're no, still... I'm I'm using these guys just as kind of uh, my gatekeeper. My two southern groups of four are going to be the uh, the primary engagers on this one. Yeah, I'm going to use the this group of two that's already airborne, kind of as a uh, my reserve Backup. here. Yeah, backup, yeah. backup reserve, you know, take, you know, whoever uh, gets through. I mean, they are, they are armed with sparrows and sidewinders, so. Yeah. Uh, although their that... sidewinders relatively new. Oh, I think I found the noise that you said sounds like a vacuum cleaner. If you hear that, that's probably just my refrigerator noises oh. like that. Oh, okay. All right, um, so we've got a spare. We've got sparrows launched. And the yeah the. All right, so we have identified these as attack aircraft. So that's gotta be F fives. Maybe F-4s. See how this goes. Still, those... Those F-14s are... That's an awfully big potential area. Although I think that if they were closer, we'd actually have seen them on radar by now. So I'm not too concerned that they're actually on top of me. You know, I would venture to guess they're farther. They're a little farther back. All right, so we got one kill so far. Lots of misses. Yay for the uh, the sparrow. Nope, they're SU-24s, or at least a couple of these are SU-24s. I didn't realize that the uh, Iranians had SU-24s, actually. They bought several, and they had the rest as um, basically war reparations, because, you know, in the Gulf War, Iraq's Air Force fled to Iran, so the SU-24s from the Iraqi Air Force basically screamed in they most of them made it to iran safely so they iranians were happy to take the war reparations and and use them and they apparently bought several but yes su-24s are there and that's what they're hmm. trying to be used for now because i know that there's did you um now i know that what i, I at least re i remember when i was doing research on iran um, that they there was like a lot of like rumored purchases that were never confirmed that they ever actually bought these or they haven't been yeah seen. there's a, a ton of stuff floating around that they're about to buy a ton of j10s they're about to buy a ton of su30s they're about to buy a ton of this or that oh i believe it when i see them it's not that likely and it's not as likely Likely, yeah, that's the sort of thing that keeps popping up. It's There's reasons for why it's unlikely that are both military and political. Um, the Of course, that's not stopping a command scenario designer from saying, hey, the sanctions are lifted, let's give them a giant fleet of, of, of whatever you need to make it challenging, but for 
this live scenario I have to hew closer to what's there. So. All right, so we've uh, defeated all but two so far. We do have incoming Sam, 